So as we were saying in the previous segment, the job of the static magnetic field is to create, is to align protons, either parallel or anti-parallel with the magnetic field, and create this little magnetic field called M0 um, that we want to measure. Now there's, however, there's a problem in measuring it. That M0, by virtue of being created inside the, the main magnetic field, the three Tesla magnetic field, it's hidden inside it and we can't measure it. So we, we somehow need a way to get M0 away from B0 so that we can measure it. And that is what radio frequency coils do. Now there's several types of radio frequency coils and their job, as we will see in a moment, is to emit energy, emit radio frequencies that get absorbed by the protons and then to receive the radio frequency energy that is emitted back by the protons. Again, just like any other form of imaging. What you're seeing here on the top is a conventional type of coil, often referred to as a birdcage coil because of its shape. And this is a head radio frequency coil, meaning that typically a participant's head would go in here so that the radio frequency coil could inject radio frequency into the head and take pictures of the tissues inside the head. And something like this would give you a pretty good uh, image of the full brain. Now, sometimes um, in some contexts, people don't use uh, this kind of coil, but use what is known as a surface coil or a cortex coil. And the reason is that this coil, you can put it straight against somebody's head. For example, in this image here, this coil was rested really on the back of the participant's head. And uh, the idea is that by being so close to the brain, you can get higher resolution images. Now, uh, for example, people who study vision, which happens to, to um, use a lot of the real estate in the back of your brain, now they will often do this because what they care about is to get a high resolution image of what's back here. They don't really care for the rest of the brain, so it doesn't really matter uh, if you're studying um, if you're studying the back of the brain, you might not need in some circumstances to see what's happening in the front of the brain. And so sometimes people, when they're doing, trying to do very detailed study of a visual function, uh, they will only use these surface coils. The truth is that today, many uh, advanced coils are actually several of these surface coils uh, put together. For example, you can see this image, there's one surface coil, here there's another one, here there's another one and they're partly overlapping, but together they can image the whole brain. And so you can get particularly nice um, uh, high resolution images of the whole head. So as we were saying, here's B0 and we use B0 in order to align protons, most parallel, uh, uh, many, but a few less anti-parallel to the field, and this creates M0. Now, we want to measure M0, but as I said, it's inside B0. And this means that we can't measure it. And that's what radio frequencies, radio frequency coils, uh, which create a B1 magnetic field, are for. So what you would do is you would take uh, a radio frequency coil, you would inject energy, you would emit energy, uh, protons will absorb that, and by virtue of absorbing it, they will tilt away, in fact, for example, down to 90 degrees, they will tilt away from M0. And now you can measure, sorry, they will tilt away from B0. And now that M0 is in, is in the axial or the lateral plane, now you can measure it. Right? So the job of the radio frequency coil is to extract M0 away from B0, so that we can measure it. And the angle uh, by which you tilt uh, M0 is conventionally referred to as theta or the flip angle. Now, of course, it's not quite that you put in a radio frequency coil and the protons sort of fall on their side. Um, if you are standing on a proton, this is what it would look like. It would look like the proton is just tilting away from B0 for example, by 90 degrees or whatever is the flip angle. Now, if you stepped out of the protons, remember protons, right? 
are precessing. So if you stepped out of a proton and looked at a proton, what you would actually see is this movement. So the proton, I will show you a video in just a moment, but the proton, the, the, excuse me, if you stepped out of a proton and looked at what protons do, you would see that M0 starts up here, right? And as you inject the radio frequency pulse, M0 starts nutating away from the Z axis and slowly following this black path all the way down into the lateral, the, longi the, the lateral axis. Okay, let me show you a video which makes it much clearer. So here we are, this arrow right here is M0, okay? So what's going to happen is that you're going to see a radio frequency pulse being injected and you will see how M0 rotates away from the z-axis down into the xy plane, into the transversal plane. So there they are. And hop, you put in the radio frequency pulse and M0 gets tilted down by 90 degrees. Then you stop the pulse and M0 goes back up. Okay, so we can see it again. So M0 is pointing up. We're gonna inject the radio frequency pulse and that's going to, to make M0 tilt away from the main, from B0. And then as you stop the radio frequency pulse, it will slowly come back up. Okay, so this is how we use the radio frequency pulses and, and, the, uh, and the energy that they produce in order to tilt M0 away from the main magnetic field so that we can measure it. Um, now, here's a problem. How do we actually physically tilt um, M0 away from B0? Uh, and see, one thing you could do is you, if, you, if, if B1, the radio frequency pulse, were just a super strong field, right? You might be able to push, um, to push uh, M0 away, but if you put in a super strong magnetic field, you will also move B0. So that doesn't work. Think of it this way. Imagine that you have a friend that is sitting um, on a swing set. Now your friend is, is still, okay, is, is not swinging. What it means is that they are aligned with, um, with, the, uh, with the force of gravity, right? They're pointing downwards. So they are inside, um, they're pointing in the direction of gravity. Now, how can you get your friend from sort of being down to being at 90 degrees away from gravity? Well, two ways. You could either give them a really strong shove, but that would of course take a lot of energy. And as I said, it doesn't work quite as well with magnetic fields. What you typically would do is you would probably slowly push your friend Right? And, and push them stronger and stronger and stronger. Now, the important thing is that you have to push your friend exactly at the same rhythm or at the same frequency that they are swinging. If you push at a different frequency, it won't work, right? If your friend, uh, if you imagine, so your friend swinging, if your friend is away and you try to push, nothing happens. You have to push exactly together with the movement of your friend, okay? So if you inject an energy slowly and gently, but in synchrony with the movement of your friend on the swing set, you can actually push them away from, the, from gravity, okay? Now we're going to do exactly the same thing. Radio frequency pulses work in exactly the same way. Now, let me show you uh, a video that explains this. So here's our protons. Uh, and now I'm showing you the individual protons as opposed to just M0, okay? Because it, it helps understand how it works. So here they are. And just for the sake of this example, they just happen to be all aligned. They're all parallel to the magnetic field. So here they are. And, and notice also that each proton is in a slightly, is pointing in a slightly sort of random direction. So they're all pointing up. So they're creating M0. But, you know, one is pointing a little more to the right, one a little, uh, sorry, to the right. <laughs> one a little more to the left. Uh, so net, there really just is a, 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 an M0 vector pointing upwards. 
So here they are, they're spinning, very happy. And now we're going to inject the radio frequency pulse. And here it is. And notice that the radio frequency pulse, see, it's like you're pushing these protons. And notice now they're all going together because they're all being pushed as if they were in a swing at the same rhythm. And then you stop. And what they will do is they will, they will come back up. They will, they will relax, as we say, back into B0. But we will discuss this a little bit later. Let me show you again the beginning of the video. So here we are, the protons are uh, swinging um, in parallel with B0. Now we inject the radio frequency pulse and notice that they all start swinging together. It's as if we were pushing a lot of friends on many swings all at the same time. Now they're all swinging together. And now we have them all at 90 degrees away from B0. From B0. Okay, so that's how a radio frequency pulse uh, allows you to move uh, M0 away from B0. We don't give one giant push, we, we gently push at, at, the, at the specific um, frequency, which is the frequency at which these protons happen to be swinging. Now, what is that frequency? Well, I'm glad you asked. See, when protons precess about, um, about an axis, they actually do so at, at what is known as uh, the Larmor frequency. Now, the Larmor frequency really depends um, on two things. So the frequency at which a proton, um, at which a proton um, uh, precesses is, 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 uh, is uh, a function of two things. Gamma, now gamma is the gyromagnetic constant. Each, each, each uh, element uh, has its own gyromagnetic constant. And B0 is the strength of the magnetic field. So if you know which element we're talking about, in our case, hydrogen, and you know the strength of the magnetic field inside which you're putting the um, atom of hydrogen, um, you know exactly at what frequency it's precessing. And that, which is called the Larmor frequency, is the frequency at which you have to push it in order to get it away from inside B0 to outside B0. So for example, here, uh, this is a list of, um, um, of different nuclei. And you know, for example, the most abundant ones in the human body um, are those that I'm highlighting. But of all of these, the only one that, that has uh, strong magnetic resonance properties is hydrogen. And so what you're seeing here is the gyromagnetic constant divided by 2p, by 2, <laughs> divided by 2 pi. Um, so this, this, the gyromagnetic constant is a constant per each element. For example, hydrogen um, uh, has 42.576. Um, uh, for example, you can see here oxygen has minus 0.772. Um, iron has 40.053. Um, and again, if you know what element you're working with and you know the strength of the magnetic field, you know exactly at, at the, the frequency at which it's precessing. And again, that's the frequency at which you want to push it in order to get it away with, from uh, the B0 magnetic field. So for example, in the case of the hydrogen, uh, if you put it inside uh, a 1.5 Tesla, it means that it's, it's, uh, um, it's, uh, it's uh, precessing at 63.87 megahertz. If you're inside a, th a three Tesla machine, if you do three Tesla times uh, 42.576, you get 127.74 megahertz. So if you take an, a hydrogen proton, you put it inside an MRI machine, and you want to gently, you want to use uh, the radio frequency uh, coil to push it away from B0, for example, by 90 degrees, you need to push it at 127.74. Remember, it's like a friend on a swing. If you push it at the wrong rhythm, at the wrong frequency, it doesn't work. You need to push it at the exact frequency at which that nucleus is precessing. How do you know what's the frequency? Well, it's the Larmor frequency. It's a function of two things. 
the gyromagnetic constant of that nucleus, which we know, and the strength of the magnetic field it's in. So if you know what nucleus you're working with, and you know the strength of the magnetic field it's in, you know exactly at what frequency to push it in order to tilt it away from B0 so that you can measure it.